again, everybody. Dave Brown and Michael St. John here at ringside. And what a day we've got today on USWA Wrestling. Dave, do you, got, do you have a feeling that this crowd has a feeling that we've got some great wrestling on hand today? Indeed. Because we do. In fact, we have a world tag team title match on the card. And we have slated it to start the card because we were, uh, want it to go uh, the full hour. I mean, if the match goes a full hour, we want to have the full hour to see the that's world true. tag team title. Supposed to be 60 minute time limit and that's what we're going to block out today for it. And it's a brand new team coming into the area. The Texas Outlaws brought in by uh, Eric Emery mm, to try to take those, ta uh, those titles away from Jeff Jarrett and Robert Fuller. Plus on the card, we'll, uh, we'll, Jerry the King Lawler will be out here a little mm. later. We have a six man tag battle and a whole lot more schedule. But that world tag team title is what it's all about. That's right. Could preempt most of the other matches but we do have the standbys. We better get going if we're going to uh, give that match all that time let's do that we'll be back and get it started for you right after this tag title match coming up i'm out here with the challengers right now the, the hey, texas outlaw just right now dave brown with eric because Kimber. just in a few minutes man you're looking at the new world tag team champions there ain't nothing new eddie marlin or any of these illiterate idiots over here in the studio can do about it, Dave Brown. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to uh, get a word or two from no, them. No, 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 no. If you want to talk to them, if you want to know anything about the Texas Outlaws, you ask me. Well, all right, where'd they come from? Uh, where'd they come from? Stupid day from the great state of Texas. Oh, oh, oh. You boys coming to fight? Yeah, you coming to fight? All right. Fight. Wait, wait, wait. Eric Embry, me and Robert sat back there and watched the monitor. We were expecting to have the Texas Outlaws out here. They are the Texas Outlaws. If you think that I'm this stupid or if Robert's this stupid or that these people are that stupid, you got another thing coming. These guys right here, the ballroom brawlers. The and ballroom we, brawlers? Yes, and we know better than anybody because we kicked their tail from one end of this area to the other. We beat them in cage matches. We beat them in Texas brawls, Tennessee street fights, everything. Hey, Look. and them two guys are the barroom brawlers, and you can't do a thing about it. They lost to Loser Leaf Town, Eric Kimbrey. The barroom brawlers. You've seen this happen That's everywhere. You've seen ball. this happen everywhere, every company. The same thing happened. Try to come back under a mask. We know very clearly who this is. It's not hard to figure well, it out. Let me tell you you hot stuff. Idiots. No, you they listen to me. Me. Hey, this is America, man. This is America, right? Well, you got to prove that they're the barroom brawlers. If you can take their mask off and they are the brawlers, then they'd be suspended for life. I ain't that stupid. It's the That's Texas true. Outlaws. Those hey, are going to belong to me. Get the ring and try Hey, to Eric Embry. Me and Robert Fuller take the titles very seriously. And obviously, you're trying to make a joke of the titles. The USWA is trying to make a joke of the titles. We're the champions, and no barroom brawlers are going to get a shot. You let the Texas Outlaws take them there. Is this supposed to be is this a, the title match against the Texas Outlaws, Dave? That's, that's what side of Texas, uh, the Texas Outlaws against you two and the world I title during the line. What are they? Who, who do they look like to you? Well, I, I agree with you, Jeff. No who doubt. They look like, man. You're innocent until proven guilty. Get if you're so hot, get in the ring and take it off. Take their mask off. Okay, well, we may see an unmasking here today, too. Jeff and Robert head for the ring. If you would get your challenge. A little huddle here. Eric Embry's Texas Outlaws. They sure look like the barroom brawlers to it's me. Eric no... Embry's Texas Outlaws, man. Well, that's what that's what you said. Well, that's that's what I said. That. Well, let's go. Whoa, wait a minute. Let's get going here early. We even have time to ring the bell, and right away the bar. I, I mean, the Texas Outlaws. That's a referee call for the bell. I'm not sure. I think he has. Yeah, okay. I think the match has already started. Look at this. They're going to take this one off right here and now. We're going to see. In fact, if it is indeed the uh, barroom brawlers under the hood of the uh, Texas Outlaws, and look, Jeff Jarrett going to work on the other. Uh, Outlaw, I'll tell you, Dave, I'm so confused, I don't quite know what to call them. Yeah, well, I guess technically we have to call them the Texas Outlaws. You know, I, I hate to admit it, but Embry has a point uh, until he get the mask off and can prove who it is. Uh, the match was signed as Texas Outlaws. I don't know who they are. I know who they look like. But yeah. uh, I guess we'll call them Texas Outlaws until proven different here. Well, when they came out, it, it just, uh, it struck us. It was funny because I think you and I had the realization yeah. at the same time, like, I've seen these two guys yeah. before. Well, they're going 
comes the outlaw in the ring up against Jeff Jarrett. This is, by the way, for the World Tag Team Championship. It was signed here for television, and uh, promoter Eddie Marlin puts the match first on the uh, agenda here today. It's a 60-minute time limit, so it can go on until we have a winner. By the way, since it is a 60-minute time limit, uh, should it get to the point we need to take a break, we may have to cut away and keep the tape rolling just to uh, to alert you fans to that possibility as we go along with this one-minute time and limit. And look at this, Robert Fuller coming into the ring. They're going to try to right away find out if indeed the Texas Outlaws are the barroom brawlers. And I just hope they don't get too... Uh, concerned about taking the mask off and let something slip by. Yeah, that can cost you a match sometimes. Sometimes it's better just to go ahead and forget about the mask, wrestle the opponent, win the match, take the belts and get out of here and prove it later. The World Tag Team Championship's on the line. And, and I also am looking at Eric Embry here on the uh, uh, on the uh, apron and on the floor. I guess this means that Eric Embry has a manager's license in the USWA. Well, I believe he does. Otherwise, uh, I think uh, someone would be out here to escort him out of the area, especially since the tag titles are on the lines. Uh, that is not unusual for a wrestler also to have a manager's license. That is true. And uh, unfortunately, that means double trouble. Yes, it does. And especially in this case for Robert Fuller and Jeff Jarrett. Collar and elbow, Fuller backed into the corner. Barroom, bro uh, I did it again. Texas Outlaw pounding away at Fuller. Eric's Texas Outlaws. Now Fuller kicking away to the midsection, into the ropes. Whoa, look at the clothesline. And the big man, Robert Fuller, puts Eric's Texas Outlaw on the canvas. He's going for the mask, too. Eric Embrig got uh, the outlaw by the ankle trying to pull him out of the way to get him away from Fuller and uh, save the mask. Ambry doing exactly that. Fuller trying to stomp the uh, outlaw. Eric Embry repositioning the mask. Other outlaws got a chair. This one has been out of hand from prior to the opening bell. Referee beginning the count. New referee assigned for this match also. Dave. That's exactly right. Special for the world title match. Now the, the outlaw climbs into the ring but brings that folding metal chair. The referee is telling him to get that out of here. He's going after Robert Fuller anyway. Fuller backing him off into the corner. He dropped that chair. If you remember correctly, Dave, the barroom brawlers made an art out of throwing chairs here in the USWA. They anyway, sure did. Yeah, matter of fact, we had a couple of barroom brawls with chairs in the ring, but they started it with folding metal chairs. Sent to the floor again. This time, Fuller follows him out. In the meantime, Jeff Jarrett takes over on the other Texas outlaw, Eric Embry, Texas outlaw. Now Embry coming over to assist. Jarrett has one on one side of the ring, and he's going to put him into the post in the corner. The outlaw is in trouble. Robert Fuller rolls the other one back into the ring. There's Jeff with the one end. He runs him into the ring post uh, down the way there. And now you hear Embry threatening Jeff Jarrett. He, Jeff is uh, now being cornered by both of the Texas Outlaws, and Outlaw now being caught. This has been a while. This is, uh, is uh-oh, Eric Emery going right to work on Jeff Jarrett on the floor. He seized the moment and the opportunity when the referee was turned. So now it's three against one. Robert Fuller around to help. Two against two. Uh, three against one right there, Mr. Embry. I can count and so can the fans. I think Embry is upset that uh, his charade has been uncovered a little bit early, but yeah. uh, of course we can't prove it just quite yet, but I got a feeling that we will. Ooh, he just nailed Jeff in the top of the head with a fist twice. Embry doing as much damage from the floor as he can do in the ring. And Jeff Jarrett is down. He's ordering one of his Texas outlaws to stomp away tag made. The other outlaw is going to come in. I think you just made an interesting point. Embry has done more damage than uh, both of the brawl the uh, outlaws have uh, in the match uh, officially. We're a little over five minutes past in this match, I believe. Yeah, right at the five-minute mark right now. And uh, it has been just action-packed from the beginning. Sure has. And now Embry has inserted himself into the action. World Tag Titles on the line. Jeff Jarrett in the ring. Set into the ropes. An elbow coming off by one of the outlaws. Texas Outlaw caught him with that outlaw. The crowd coming alive, cheering on the Golden Boy, Jeff Jarrett. There's a cover by the outlaw. A two count was all he got, Jarrett to kick out. 
Jeff Jarrett still alive in there. Look out, the uh, the outlaw going after Robert Fuller. That may have been a mistake. Fuller comes in swinging at him. Referee tried to look, hey, look at Embry. It allows the opening for Eric Embry. It opens the window of opportunity for Embry to put the fist into the side of Jeff Jarrett. And that, as intentional, I think, Dave, as you could come in a match. I, there's no doubt in my mind. Remember that little huddle over here before the match started? Mm -hmm. I bet they went over that and said, hey, every chance you get, Bring him over there and let me nail him for you. you. Have a shot. I think you're absolutely right. And I wouldn't pat, put it past Eric Embry for telling him anything. And here, look at him. Now he's going to walk off. Makes it look good. Referee starts the count. Look at Embry. What are you doing? He grabbed the belt. He grabbed the belt off the desk and he just nailed Jeff Jarrett with the, with the world title belt. He will. Jarrett. Coming back to his feet. Boy, there's a lot of fight in this young man. Going after one, now the other Texas outlaw. Jeff Jarrett going to work with the right hand. Goes right after Eric. Look out. Here they come. Whoa. Every way laid into our table here at ringside. The referee on the floor to break it up. In the ring, Robert Fuller taking care of the Texas outlaws as Jeff Jarrett and Eric Emery here at our desk. Going to work. Wait, look out, look out. Look out, it's Billy Travis with a guitar. Oh, no. Billy Travis just nailed Robert Fuller with a guitar. Fuller is down. Outlaw goes for the cover. One, two, three. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The Texas Outlaws have won the match. Thanks to Billy Joe Travis and his guitar. This is ridiculous. Hey, hey, hey wait a minute, Embry. Hey, you might as well put the belts down. You're not going to be able to keep those. Your tag team champions, Eric Outlaw. I, I can't believe what I've just seen. They've grabbed the belts. They leave. There are pieces of the guitar still laying in the ring. How can this? Look at it. Look at it. And Robert Fuller is down. we got to get some help out here for him. Yeah, we, we got to get some help for him. Robert is still stunned. Jeff, I tell you, let's take a break. We'll be back here in just a minute. He's scheduled, and quite frankly, I'd planned on congratulating. That is. That's a brother right there. That is. Take a look right there. That's a guitar. That's the trademark of Billy Joe Davis. Davis, it ain't enough to come out here and wrestle against three guys. Everybody in the studio saw the likes of Eric Emery do nothing but triple team. Jeff Jarrett the whole way. What's he going to do when he's got to wrestle three guys? I'm trying to come in, but I can't chase Emory and take care of the other two at the same time. I'll tell you something, boys. I'll tell you USWA. I'll tell Eddie Merlin. Anybody you figure you're going to beat the number one world tag team in all the world with a bunch of garbage like that, I'm going to tell you, I said I'd be done, and I will be done because we are going to get a return match with them. Emory, you want to be there? Oh, God, bring it on down. Get Eddie Marlin out here. Well, you're the, yeah, go see if you can find Eddie. Get him out of here. And uh, see, yeah, see if they can get a rematch. They try uh, to make a complete. Yeah, they try to make a joke of the title. It's uh, Eric Emery. You know as well as everybody else. That's the ballroom brothers. They shouldn't have been in the first place. And then it took four of you. Well, get some. We want a rematch. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculous. I, it's more than ridiculous. What this is, this is stupid. This is nonsense. This is ridiculous. My head feels like it's been exploded with a damn hand grenade. I'm going to tell you, Billy Travis, and I'm going to tell you, Eric Henry, we are going to have those boys. We're going to have them now. Oh, I'm going to pack my bags, and I'm going to do like I said before. I'm getting my head. Robert Fuller, Jeff Jarrett, Steve, Michael is checking with Eddie. What did Eddie say? Promoter Eddie Marlin is saying that the PYT have an open contract for a match for the World Tag Team Championship coming up this week, and there's no way it can be changed, that the PYTs will get a match with the new champions, and it can't be changed. You hear that? Yeah. Hey, the PYTs, they ain't nothing. I tell both you guys standing right here, I'm going to find Eddie Marlin, wherever he's at in this building. Where's the PYTs? Where are the PYTs? Let's do some talking. Let's go. Well, there they go. I, I, 
Yeah, Eddie, Eddie says that the match has been signed, and that, that would be right if the match is already signed. Contenders for whoever has the belt, so they're the ones that, that get the match. I, and, I, and I think, Jeff, when uh, Robert Fuller and, and Jeff, when the tape is shown and taken to the USWA's Board of Governors, like Eddie was saying back, uh, back there, is that uh, it will probably be reversed anyway if true. they'll just let that's justice true, that's, take its course. That's true. I understand how upset they are, but that's true. They, they, probably once the review is done, they're going to get the belts back anyway. Well, I tell you what, we, we need, to, uh, need to move on right here. Oh, I tell you what we need to do. Last week, we had that situa situation several times, a confrontation between Dutch Mantell and Eric Embry. Here's what happened. If there's ever any insinuation that I wrote a letter to you, Dutch Mantell, and didn't sign it, <laughs> you're sadly mistaken. Because I got enough guts if I got something to say to you, Mantell, to say it right to your face, man. I don't like the Dutch Mantell. If you were from the state of Texas, we'd throw you out of there a long time ago. So you ain't from the state of Texas. And this two-bit flea bag, Stan Hansen, that you're looking for, <laughs> you know, Dutch you know what, man? If Dutch Mandel, if you were here right now, you know what I'd do to you? You know what I'd do, Dave? I'd walk right back through that other dressing room door. I'd go right over to the top of Jerry Lawley. I'd kick Jeff Jarrett in the mouth. I'd slap Bill Dundee. And Dutch Mandel, I'd grab you by that flea infested beard of yours. And I'd drag you out of this studio where the whole television world could see me beat your brains out, man. I'd beat you up so bad. That Dutch man said, you know what he'd do? He'd get on his knees. He'd say, please, Mr. Emery, don't hit me no more. I'd pick him up and I'd slap him. I'd knock him out there. I'd go over and I'd get a check. And I'd get those who to help him. Because Dutch Mandel, as these idiots can tell you, man, like me or not, they know I ain't never backed down from anybody on the face of God's green earth. About the letters? No, I didn't like no letter, Dutch. Hey, me and you's like brothers, man. You know, me and, me and you, we from the great state of Texas. Wait, 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 wait. What he, what he did say, what, what about this grab him by the beard and drag him out of the dressing room and all that sort of thing? Grab who by what? Dud, you said if he were here, you'd I grab him. said what? And drag him out of the dressing room and kick him and, and punch him. And hey, you're a bald-faced liar, man. I didn't say Wait a minute. Of the sort. Wait a minute. Hey, people, did he say something bad about me? Did he? Wait a minute. Did he say he was going to yank me up and slap me? Did he say it? Hey, did you say it? No, sir. You don't like me, do you? You don't like, you don't care nothing about me. No, I don't. See, no. see, we're just like all of them. They don't care. Uh, hey, we're you from write the, the letter. I didn't write no letter. You and me, we from Texas, right? We from the great. I guess Texas. if you're from Texas, I guess we're both. You're from, from Texas. Ultra, Texas, yes, a I big woman in the yeah. town out in West Texas. Yeah. I know exactly where it's at. Now, said, said there was no oil trough early. Did you hey, let me tell you something, man. You keep out of it. Tell him what you said. So, I, I said it's like a daylight and dark out here. What I was hearing 15, 20 minutes ago. Hey. What do you want me to do? real simple. Okay. There's the light. Okay, there's the light. He said you stay over there and you with him. And you're my enemy. Well, you cross that line and you're with me. If you ain't with me, you're against me. Well, I'm going to tell you what. If you want to put it that way, if we're drawing lines That's in this... That's the way I put it. Come on. Make your move. If you so much as ever lay one finger on me again, Dutch man, even though you are from Texas. <laughs> what? 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 What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Come on, make your move. You're making me move. That's how you win. Tojo with that flag nails touch from behind. There's Embry going right. Look at this. Now oh, Embry with a flag jabbed him right in the rib cage. 
Eric Embry takes the Texas flag from Tojo. Uh, two against one here. They, uh, these guys are something else. Oh, look out. Embry picking up Dutch's hat. Holy cow, Dave, we gotta we gotta get some order restored yeah, here. Yeah, we're gonna Embry going after Dutch. Uh, Eric Fontaine. Here comes oh, Fontaine. Oh, look out. Embry. There's Embry right there with Billy Joe Travis. And Billy Joe Travis coming out of the dressing room simultaneously. Dutch being kicked out of the ring across the way from Eric Embry. Eric kicking him down on the floor. Jeff Jarrett in there with Billy Joe Travis and the two PYTs. Honey Love prancing around the ring. Dutch Mantel's left the uh, studio, Dave. Uh oh. Jeff Jarrett being triple teamed in the ring right now by both PYTs and. Uh, Flamboyant Eric Embry and a uh, well, triple quadruple team. There's Billy Joe Travis in there, too. Four against one. Jeff in trouble here. Oh, that's why Dutch left. That's Shoe Baby. Dutch Mantell has Shoe Baby going to work with it. Boy, oh boy, Billy Joe Travis hit the floor in a hurry, as did the PYTs, and Eric Embry's over here with Tojo Yamamoto. At least he didn't bring him out under a mask, claiming he was somebody else. Claiming who was no. what? That is the Texas Outlaws. Eric's Texas Outlaws, Dave Brown. Man, I'm on top of the world. I got a team that's the world tag team champion. I'm the greatest, baddest Southern heavyweight champion that the Mid-South has ever seen. It's all going my way, Dave. Everything's going my way. Uh, you've got a match coming up, speaking of that Southern Heavyweight title. You're going to have to put it on the line. Yeah, yeah, Southern Heavyweight title on the line. Big, bad Dutch Mantel. <laughs> I showed you last week how bad Dutch Mantel was. Dutch, I didn't write no letter. But if I did, there ain't nothing he can do about it, Dave. So Dutch, Southern Heavyweight title, there ain't no way. I'm walking out of that ring with the title held high. Right along with those world tag team titles. You, you sound very happy to have this Southern Heavyweight match. Very happy. I'm happy, man. I am happy. Let me see. Let me. Let me. Do, wait. Let me. Uh, can I read this to you? Th this is the match. I know the match. Southern Heavyweight title on the line. That's right. Er Eric Embry against Dirty Dutch Mantel. Ring and close with a 12 foot cage. Special referee, Eddie Marlin. Tojo will be handcuffed oh. to the dirty white boy. Those are your stipulations. Three, three, Daddy. Show me that. All right, all right. There, here it is. Yeah, look. Ring and close. Uh, all right, Southern Heavyweight title match. Belts on the line. Ring and close, 12 foot cage. Special referee, Eddie Marlin. Dirty white boy will be handcuffed to Tojo Yamamoto during the match. You ain't lying. No. I shot up. Eddie Marlin! Eddie Marlin! Man, you turn it into my worst nightmare! Twelve foot cage! Jojo ends up the white boy! And Eddie Marlin, a special referee! Why, Eddie Marlin, I got another idea! Why don't you just get him to put on the marquee? Southern heavyweight title! Eric Embry versus the whole USWA. And he got a Dutch man and any and everybody else. I know what you're trying to do. I bet you ain't all the time to that man. Eddie Marlin, hey, come out of here right now, Eddie Marlin. Now I know I'm wasting my breath because you ain't got a gun in your body. But let me tell you something, Dave Brown. If Eddie Marlin so much as makes one bad call referee in that match, if you don't do it impartial, I swear on my life, Eddie Marlin, that they'll carry you out of that arena in a box. And as for you, Dutch Mantel, I'm going to wish you'd never heard of flamboyant Eric Embry. It's that dead blame simple, Dave. Nobody can beat me. Eric Embry, not too happy with those stipulations. Mr. Embry, before you leave, before you leave, I'm going to make your day even further here. Not only you have trouble with Eddie Marlin, Dutch Mantel, the 12-foot ring, dirty white boy. But also, I think you may have another problem. Take a look at this videotape from Tom Pritchard. You seen Tom? I seen Tom. Where'd you find him? Watch. You just watch this. I ain't worried about Tom. Tom and... Uh, 
How you doing, Eric? It's good to see you. I understand that you were in Dallas, Texas looking for me last week, but you see, you don't have to come to Dallas to look for me anymore, Eric. You don't have to go anywhere in the great state of Texas because here I am standing in the great state of Texas. I can tell the air is different. I can see the sun coming out. I'm in the middle of God's country, Eric. I heard you were looking all over Dallas, all over Houston for me last week. Well, I can tell you this, Eric, you don't have to look for me anymore because Monday night in the Mid-South Coliseum, my friend, I'm going to be coming to see you, Eric. I'm going to be coming in that Mid-South Coliseum to see you. I've heard there's been a lot of things going on. I heard you've been talking a lot of things. I've heard everybody's been talking a lot of things around the Memphis area. Well, Monday night, Eric, I'm not going to be coming to talk. I'm going to be coming to fight. <laughs> what do you think about that now, huh? Eric? Eric? I don't know how you did it, but I'm going to beat this Jabroni up like I'm going to beat everybody else. Eric Embry heads to the ring, scheduled again. Who is that, Dr. X? Dr. X in the ring right there. Whoa! Dr. X just nailed Embry with a couple of right hands. Eric Embry nailed the wall. Oh! That's oh! Dutch Dr. X. Two people can play that mask thing. Dutch Mantel. Look at Embry. He's, he's out of here. He is hanging back. Kojo Yamamoto is saying, go ahead and just let's get out of here. Let's just leave, they say. There they go. That's going to be it. Dutch Mantel. Coming your way, Dave. Dr. X. Yes, sir. Let me tell everybody watching that can see me today, Eric Embry, this is your last big hurrah. Now, you've run over everybody, you know, and i got a match with you in the cage because I'm getting tired of you running. Eddie Marlin's getting tired of you running. Are you fans tired of him running? Well, let me tell everybody... The race is over, Embry. And I don't like the way you got down on your hands and knees out here. You said I was going to beg, and you was going to slap me around. That's a two-way street. I've been in that street all my life. You see, you can't do nothing. You can't do nothing on your own. If this camera can come lower, I'm going to show you how, how low Eric Embry is. Eric Embry is this low right here. He's as low as a snail. And if you want to wrestle snails, you've got to get down there on the ground with them. And I'm down here on the ground with you, Embry. In the cage, you can't run with a special referee, a man who hates your guts as much as I do, Eddie Marlin. And that little Tojo handcuffed the dirty white boy. And I'm going to promise the fans one thing. When we meet, meet up, Embry, it's going to be your last rodeo because I'm going to ride you completely out of town. Dutch Mantel, he gets a win here today as Embry was counted out when he and Tojo decided time. Uh, Jeff and Robert. All right, guys. Dave and Eric Embry and the USWA, I want you to listen up real good. Yeah, Eric and USWA, y'all think you got one over myself and Robert. No, we just came from that dressing room and we talked to the PYTs and we got our match. Barroom brawlers, yeah, that's what you are. Uh, those belts come match time or back hours. See, you know, it's a funny thing. You go over to the other man's dressing room, you figure that you're going to run right into dead face with your problem. You figure you're going to see Eric Emery over there, or maybe that good-for-nothing backstabbing Travis, or maybe you're going to see him sitting there without the mask, the barroom brawlers. But ain't it funny, Jeff? We get in that dressing room, and who's there? Those two good-for-nothing PYTs and nobody else. That shows me, boys, you don't want us bad as you think you do. <laughs> and I'm going to guarantee you one thing. This team right here ain't never been no pansies, and they never been no overnight success. We've been six months the greatest tag team that ever wore those USW. Thank you very, very much. And I'm going to guarantee you something. That crowd right there that seems to love this tag team are going to have an opportunity to keep on doing it because we're not going to split up, are we, Jim? No, sir, Robert. Because we ain't been beat. We've not been beat yet. That we're going in that ring. And, boys, 
We're not only going to unmask you. We're not only going to win those belts back. We're going to see you don't come back here, but we're not going to do it depending on Eddie Marlin or anything else. We're going to do it by busting your skulls and doing it for good. Jeff and Roberts say they've got it worked out with PYT. I want to get some confirmation that it's been signed. I'll go do that. Let's take a break, and we'll be back in uh, fill you in. A check. Yes, indeed. Wanted to get some confirmation there because I know in, uh, in, in as upset as they are, you know, I wanted to make sure that everything was done officially, and, and it was. Uh, what happened was that uh, Robert and Jeff went back to the dressing room, as they said, and they said they got everything worked out with the PYTs. Well, they got it worked out with a little cash. They paid him $1,000 apiece to step aside, Eddie Marlin says as long as the PYTs agreed to step aside from the contract, because he had contract with them, right, right. that's fine with him. So, so that wipes out that contract. So he has agreed to sign the match, Jeff Jarrett and Robert Fuller, against the Texas Outlaws. Monday night for the title. That's right. Monday night, and the title will be on the line. So that one is indeed worked out. Let's take a look at the entire card. Monday night returning to the Mid-South Coliseum. We were off course last week uh, from the Coliseum due to the Mid-South Fair, but uh, that tournament uh, still continuing at the Mid-South Fair out there. And uh, Monday night we return to the Mid-South Coliseum in the opening match. The PYTs are now going to be scheduled uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Christopher Love uh, to go against the new kid. So that will be the opening match coming up. PYTs with Christopher Love in the corner going against the new kids. Next match, World Light Heavyweight title will be on the line here. Nightmare Danny Davis back from Japan will be going against one of the goons. Hmm, then Billy Joe Travis. Boy, there he is, that's guitar. Billy Joe Travis will be going, though, against Dirty White Boy in a single match Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Lumberjack Strap Match comes up next. Bill Dundee will be going against Bull Payne. And if Bill Dundee wins, he gets two minutes in the ring with Samantha. And added to that, Samantha will be one of the Lumberjacks at ringside. So ah, should extra. be. Yes, indeed. Quite an interesting match coming up, but that's not all. The next one. And this is the one we've been talking about. Jeff Jarrett and Robert Fuller have the rematch. They came in here earlier today as World Tag Team Champions. They are going to go in as the challengers as they go against Eric Embry's Texas Outlaws, barroom brawlers maybe, but the Texas Outlaws have the belts. Jarrett and Fuller want them back. Monday night is when that'll be decided. Southern Heavyweight title match comes up next. Dirty Dutch Mantel against Eric Embry. Boy, the look on Eric Embry's face. He had not heard all the stipulations. He, he is one of those things where he got wrapped up with signing the match with Dutch Mantel. Didn't pay enough attention to the small print. Ring is enclosed with a 12-foot cage. That didn't bother him much. Special referee is Eddie Marlin. That bothered him a lot. And the dirty white boy will be handcuffed to Tojo Yamamoto. Southern heavyweight title on the line. You get the feeling that Eric Embry won't be smiling after Monday night. I think maybe not, but I think the Dutchman may very well be smiling. Main event, then. World heavyweight title match. More about this one in just a moment. The Birdman, Coco Beware, will be going against the king, Jerry Lawler. Here he is right now. The King has that unified world title in hand. He puts it on the line against Coco Beware this coming Monday night. King, you got a big match, a lot of other things going on. I'll tell you, this is one of the biggest cards that's been signed in a long, long time, and, you know, I guess it's appropriate. Following uh, the Mid-South Fair that's been in town uh, for 10 days here, and, of course, we've been having uh, USWA Championship Wrestling out at the fair. It's going to be there again tonight. We've got the... Uh, the finals tonight at the Mid-South Fair of the, of the big tournament that's been going on. And also, again, tomorrow night, I'm going to be out there tonight. I think Jeff Jarrett, Robert Fuller, uh, a lot of people out there tonight and, right. and tomorrow night also. So I want to invite everybody to come out there and see that. Uh, before I talk a little bit, uh, before I talk about this match that I've got coming up uh, Monday night, which is, of course, a big one, I want, to, I want to mention a couple of other things that you said that we got going on here. Can, it, can you not hear me over there? Is that, is it All right. That's red upstairs. I know. <laughs> We're blaming Rick. Now, we've got a little sound now. There you go. All right. Uh, yeah, I just want to mention a couple of things you said. I got some other things going. Uh, you know, last week I mentioned this big uh, uh, benefit softball game that's coming up in Nashville tomorrow, and uh, we've had a ton of calls here in, at the station yeah. in Memphis about it. I just wanted to mention uh, there is a benefit softball game. This is a big softball challenge that's going to be taking place tomorrow afternoon. Uh, at 4 o'clock at Greer Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, this is all to benefit the uh, City of Hope, which is an AIDS and cancer research center there in Nashville. 
And let me just tell you some of the people that I'm going to be playing softball with up there. I'll just mention the names, and you might want to make the trip to Nashville to see this game. It is going to be exciting. Here are some of the ball players that are going to be involved. Clint Black, Vince Gill, the Kentucky Headhunters, George Jones, Lisa Hartman's going to be there, T. Graham Brown, Paul Overstreet, Jim Barney, you know, hey, yeah. hey, hey, Vern. Hey, Vern. Uh, yeah, he's going to be there. Uh, uh, Jerry Lawler, I don't know who that guy is. Uh, listen to this. Garth Brooks. Yeah. Travis Tritt, Mark Chestnut, Mark Colley, Tricia Yearwood, Patty Loveless, Shenandoah, Conway Twitty, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. There's going to be some uh, uh, Hall of Fame baseball players there playing, too. Catfish Hunter, Don Sutton, Rick Roden, Phil Necro, and Gaylord Perry and uh, Reba McIntyre singing the national anthem. It's going to be oh the biggest goodness. thing going, yeah. So yeah, anyway, uh, now a lot of people ask about tickets. You can call Nashville Ticketmaster. The tickets are $10, and uh, it's going to be tomorrow at 4 o'clock at Greer Stadium in Nashville if you want to come up and up there. And after the game is over, there's going to be a big concert. It's kind of a jam concert featuring everybody, so it should be good, okay? <laughs> yes, and, indeed. And Quite an afternoon. That's tomorrow. That's, that's tomorrow afternoon. And then next Sunday, uh, Lawler's Army and uh, one of the new kids are going to be up there playing. Uh, we're going to have a big softball game. I, I think it's, maybe I bring Garth Brooks and Clint Black along with me, too. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to be up in Humboldt, Tennessee uh, next Sunday. Uh, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday. We're going to be up in Humboldt, Tennessee, and I'll tell you more about that to, to uh, benefit the DARE program, the, yeah. big, okay. the yep. drug rehab program. Next All right. Then. Talk about this match Monday night. Real quick. Okay. I just want to mention the reason that I am excited about this match is because, you know, uh, I guess a few a few years back, what what took place in in the in the wrestling industry, or in the wrestling profession or business as you know all sports really the bottom line is uh, they're basically businesses. They're everybody's in in the sport to make money, uh, and you, I guess before the advent of cable TV, what happened? The fans in this area, you know, they only saw the wrestling that was in their each each individual's area. Because, uh, you know, if, so, if somebody was in wrestling up in New York or out in California, you, you didn't see those TV shows, so you didn't know about the other wrestlers. But then along came cable TV, and uh, several wrestling organizations got on cable, and then all of a sudden their shows are seen all over the world, all over the country. You know, like the WWF, of course, they're on all over the country, and then the NWA comes along, and then they're on all over the country on cable. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, USWA has been on, on ESPN, and we were seen all over the country, too. But what it did, it gave the fans an opportunity to see other wrestling organizations. Now, there were some good things and some bad things about this. Uh, the good things was that fans got to see a lot of other wrestlers. But the, one of the bad things came about in this was the fact that all of the wrestling organizations all of a sudden started this fierce competition with each other. Used to, the competition was just against, between the wrestlers, and that's the way it always should have been. But then all of a sudden, the wrestling organizations, the companies, started competing with each other. They wanted to all get all the best wrestlers, and they wanted to all have all the talent, and they didn't really want to cooperate with each other. You know, like if you wrestled for the WWF, they didn't want you wrestling for the NWA. Or if you wrestled for the NWA, they didn't want you wrestling for the USWA. And that, I think, was the loss of the... That, that's where the fans became the losers, because then, you know, used to be... There, we used to claim to be world heavyweight champions, and just, you know, that was one of the things about this unified title that, that I was always proud of. And I've said this before, and, and a lot of people think, well, you're just harping on that, but if you really look at it, it's the truth. I mean, guys claim to be world champions, but in actuality, if the company that they work for won't let them wrestle anybody that's not in their company, then they're not truly considered a world champion. I mean, you know, uh, uh, if, if Hulk Hogan is calling himself the world champion, but if he can't come down here and wrestle me, or if he can't go and wrestle somebody in the NWA, then why don't, I mean, he's really just the WWF champion. The same goes for Lex Luger in the NWA. If he can't wrestle anybody outside that organization, then he is just the company champion. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking these guys as individuals, but it's just, it's just a company policy that I wish someday would change. And when I won the AWA World Heavyweight Championship, I issued a challenge to all the other so-called champions. And the only one, as I said, the only one that, the only company, the organization that had the guts, because it took a lot of guts to put your championship at stake, was the world-class organization with Kerry Von Erich. And Kerry Von Erich, the world-class world champion, wrestled me, the AWA world champion, in Chicago in December of 1988. And fortunately, I was able to come out on top in that match. And that's where the unified heavyweight championship of the world came about. 
and this is the only championship still that I'm able to go out of the USWA. You know, I just went last month up in, up in Philadelphia and wrestled for an independent organization up there that wrestles all throughout the Northeast, wrestled the Honky Tonk Man in, in, uh, in Philadelphia, and, and, you know, was able to come out victorious in that match. And it's like, this, as I said, is the only title where it can be defended outside the organization. And I'm real proud of that fact. And the reason that I'm excited about this match that's coming up Monday night is the fact that, you know, here's Coco Ware, who has just been in the WWF. And a lot of people come to me, I mean, especially the young kids, because they don't really, they don't always understand the implications and things like that. They come to me and they say, hey, why don't you go to the WWF? Or why don't you go to the NWA? And a, a lot of times they say, well, you know, why don't you go to the big time? And because I guess that these guys are on cable or, you know, every time you see it, it looks like a sold out crowd or something like that. A lot of people think that that is the big time. But I just want to tell you this. I've been to New York City. I was on, you know, I, I, I've been to New York to wrestle. I, I wrestled the Road Warriors right in, uh, in the Meadowlands Arena there in front of a sold out crowd. And I've been on the David Letterman show. And I just want to tell you my experience in New York. When I left my hotel to go to the subway to get on the David Letterman show, and this is the honest to God's truth, I stepped over out of a nice ritzy hotel. I had to step over people that were sleeping on the street. One guy had a baseball bat that he was using for a pillow that was sleeping right on the street. Now, if you people that think New York is the big time, a lot of you have obviously never been there because I can tell you that I wouldn't live in New York City if they gave me a penthouse in Trump Plaza. I love Memphis, Tennessee, and this is my home, and we have got the greatest wrestling fans in the world right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Bar none. I wrestled in Philadelphia just a few weeks ago, and there was one of the best matches that I've ever seen going on, and some of the fans were sitting there yelling, boring, boring, to me, these people are not wrestling fans like we have down here. These are real wrestling fans. These are people that know what wrestling's all about. And that's why I stay in the USWA, because this is an organization that still their primary number one concern is they sell wrestling. They sell wrestling tickets. That's the only way they make their money. They're not, you know, they're not like the WWF. They sell dolls and toys and games and cereal and everything you can think of. And that's the way they make their money. So they're not going to push wrestling. This organization is concerned with one thing, and that's selling wrestling tickets to wrestling fans. And that's why they give them wrestling. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm excited about Monday night, because it's a chance to go up against Coco Ware, who is just coming from the WWF. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Coco, because Coco is a fine wrestler. Coco is a great athlete. But I want to, I want to have a chance to show people that Memphis, Tennessee, and the USWA is big time, and it's as big time as I want to get. And I'm going to show everybody here, and I'm going to show Coco Ware that we got some winners down here. Very good, the king. Well, it's nice to do an interview where you don't have anything to disagree with. And I agree with everything that the King has just said. There he goes. As he greets the fans, we'll take a break and we'll be back in a moment. Half a guitar on here from Billy Trent. We need a paramedic in the house. Hold on. What is he doing? I have He's no got idea. that half a guitar. Making fun of one of the fans. Uh, well, what a, what a. Billy, will you get in the ring? We got a match schedule here. I couldn't hear what he was saying. Oh, uh, yeah, with a beard, I guess. He's finally paying a ticket to see me and the woman with her head on backwards. Get a paramedic now because she needs it. And somebody owes me a guitar. Well, one good thing about it, he ain't gonna be able, ain't gonna be able to sing with this guitar. Thank this goodness. Well, that's that's the only bonus I can think of from that guitar being broken up like that. What we've got here is Billy Joe Travis and Bull Payne with Samantha at ringside going against T.D. Steele and Freezer Thompson. Boy, I tell you what, Freezer and T.D. Steele, a couple of guys who will really give you a battle. I must say they're probably overmatched here today, though, with Big Bull Payne and Billy Joe Travis, all the experience they have. Oh, I couldn't echo those sentiments more because uh, look at this, Bull Payne with a belly-to-back suplex on T.D. Steele. 
full painting Billy Joe Travis. I don't like their style or tactics, but I can guarantee you one thing. They know how to handle themselves in the ring. Tag is made. Here comes Billy Joe in after TDC. And TD takes the right hand to the side of the jaw. Oh, boy. Billy Joe feeling his oats today for sure after busting that guitar over Robert Fuller's head. Yeah, he uh, he may be happy right now. I don't know. I, he's going to have to pay for that down the road and maybe not too far away. Sort of an, un, uh, an unholy alliance in there with Eric Embry. I, uh, you know, Travis and uh, Embry teaming together. Tag made. Here comes Freezer Thompson. And whoa! Freezer with a right hand. There's another one to Billy Joe Travis. That rocked him back against the ropes. Travis into the ropes. Back body drop and Freezer Thompson. Coming in after Billy Joe Travis tag is made. Here comes Bull Payne. Great move by Freezer, but now here's Bull Payne in to grab it. Reversal. Look at that. Freezer Thompson short armed him right into the third buckle. Look at that. The Freezer coming to life. Whoa. Well, you know, Freezer Thompson's looking great. And Lawler was out here last week saying what potential he thought Freezer had, and uh, he was going to take a look at him. What if the King's been working with Freezer? I don't know, Dave. You know, the funny thing about that, or the strange thing, is that Lawler's schedule. I mean, he's, he's a, here's a man, the world heavyweight champion, works from daylight to dark. I, I wish I could think that, but I'm afraid that, uh, that Lawler just wouldn't have the time to do that. Yeah, he's probably right. But something got into Freezer on that uh, exchange in the ring. Tag, in the meantime, made out. Here is uh, T.D. Steele back in the ring against Bull Payne. Payne picks him up this time, Ooh. belly to back suplex, and T.D. is down. T.D. having no luck at all. Bull Payne throws him out of the ring, through the ropes, down on the floor. Dangerous place to be with Samantha now. Billy and Joe Billy Travis. Travis. Dropping down on the floor. Travis going after Steele, picks him up. What's he going to do? Looks like he's... Oh! oh, my goodness. Right on the concrete floor. Right on the back. T.D. Steele being manhandled by Billy Joe Travis. Now tossed back into the ring. And Bull Payne takes over. Oh, back yeah. Breaker. Backbreaker. As if he needed that after T.D. had been smashed on the floor out here. That could be the end of this match. Here comes Billy Joe Travis. Let's see if he closes it out. Travis, nope, going in, picks up T.D. Steele. They're going to work over that back now. An inverted atomic drop. And Steele is down. And Billy Joe Travis and uh, Bull Payne, I guess, living up to Bull Payne's name as they inflict the pain on T.D. Steele. Just won't go for the pin. I mean, here they are. I mean, they almost certainly could get a three count on T.D. Steele after the way they beat him up and uh, injured that back. Payne just picks him up off the canvas, whips him into the ropes, Missed him. T. Steele going to make the tag. Whoa, did you see that? Just sort of a flying tackle tag at Freezer Thompson, the big man coming back in. Whoa, Freezer unloading on Bull Payne. Wow. Billy Joe. Freezer Thompson's been eating his Wheaties, Dave. Look at this. Freezer Thompson, every time we've seen him in this match, he has taken control and against this competition of Bull Payne and Billy Joe Travis. Look at that. Well, Freezer's a big man, but I unmistakably outman in experience with Bull Payne and Billy Joe Travis. But Freezer has really gone to work on both of them in this match. He has been in control when he was in there. Here's TD back after the tag. Uh-oh, Bull Payne, he tricked him. He hung onto the ropes. Bull Payne locking him in. Tag is made. Billy Joe Travis working over the smaller man is uh, the tactic, obviously, that Travis and Payne have decided to do. Travis, look at this. Double lock up here. Going in. This could be a submission hole. No. Picks him up. Ooh. Look at that. My goodness. I think I heard that called a hurricane slam once or twice. One, two, three. That's it. Billy Joe Travis gets the victory over TD Steele. Billy Joe in full pain. Successful. But boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Billy Joe with that goofy guitar what's left of it smashes it on the floor doesn't seem to be in as uh, good a mood as he was when the match no started. not at all they did win the match but boy freezer thompson here's to tojo tojo, here. tojo yamamoto out here i'm glad to see you're out here without eric embry freezer freezer thompson please please you come here i don't make trouble i don't make trouble freezer thompson you please come here talk freezer freezer watch yourself with him here. It's I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't make trouble, Freezer Thompson. Freezer Thompson, me and Eric Emery been watching you wrestle. You know what I mean? You make big improvement, good wrestler. 
and you got big potential. And me and Eric Emery make you big star. We, we want you to come with us. We make you make lots of money. You know, Tojo, I don't care too much about Eric Emery. I think I'm going to stick right over here. That's okay, that's okay. He don't have to make decisions now. That's okay. He, he, he come with us. He come with us. He, come uh, with us. He, he, he sounded pretty definite that he was not anyway, but Tojo thinks there's still hope. But boy, he looked good in that match, boy, did didn't he? he? Ooh. We'll be back right after this. coming up at the Mid-South Coliseum. It is going to be big this Monday night, but there's other big action beginning tonight in the USWA. You're right, Dave, and it's great. The USWA uh, going throughout the area, bringing the best in championship wrestling throughout the Mid-South. And in fact, I uh, had the opportunity to go through uh, some of the towns down in Mississippi last Saturday and visit some folks, and boy, oh boy, some great wrestling fans in the state of Mississippi. And tonight in Boonville, Mississippi, mm -hmm. the action gets underway. A great, great card of action coming to Boonville, Mississippi. Had the opportunity to uh, uh, go by uh, some folks last week and see some folks in Boonville, Mississippi. Seven big matches tonight. Parks and Recreation Department are putting it on at the high school uh, at the Booster Club, of course, as part of that sponsorship. Jeff Jarrett, Robert Fuller, Superstar Bill Dundee, a big ladies match. Uh, tickets are available this afternoon at Bree Bob's Cafe. You can save a dollar on advance and boom. I was going to say, still time to pick up advance tickets and save that dollar. That's right. Seven big matches tonight in Boonville, Mississippi. So make your plans to be there. Looking forward to seeing our fans. Action, action, action in Boonville. <laughs> All right. USWA will be in Clarksdale, Mississippi this coming Friday night. Civic Auditorium starting at 8 o'clock. Jerry the King Lawler, superstar Bill Dundee, Nightmare Danny Davis. Boy, he looks good since his return to Japan. Yes, looks indeed. like he, yeah, he worked out, for trimmed it. out, and looks real good. Still, the, United, uh, the World Light Heavyweight Champion, Nightmare Danny Davis will be in Clarksdale this coming Friday night. Plus, on the card, Billy Joe Travis probably will have a brand new guitar by then. King Cobra, a ladies match, and much more in Clarksdale. You can save a dollar on advance tickets by buying them from the police department. USWA action is coming to Somerville, Tennessee on Friday, October 11th at the Civic Auditorium starting at 8 o'clock. Dollar off advance tickets in Somerville, Tennessee at the Sheriff's Office, Super D Drugs, and the Lakeview Pharmacy. Jerry the King Lawler will be there along with the Golden Boy, Jeff Jarrett, Tennessee stud Robert Fuller, superstar Bill Dundee, Billy Joe Travis, and a ladies' match on tap Friday, October 11th, Civic Auditorium in Somerville, Tennessee. Plus the USWA visiting the great state of Arkansas coming into Forest City on Friday, October 18th at 7.30. Parker Furniture has advanced tickets on sale and you can save a dollar for all the matches coming your way on Friday, October 18th, Forest City, Arkansas. Plus, the USWA will be in Drummond, Tennessee on Saturday, October 26th at Drummond Elementary School. And in Jonesboro, Arkansas, the USWA returns on Sunday, October 27th at uh, the Euro Bell Community Center. Dave, we have been you. joined by Bull Payne and Samantha. You know, I got a few things to say here. Superstar Bill Dundee, you've been running, you've been hiding, and you can't get away this time. Because guess what, boy? This Monday night... We're in a lumberjack strap match. You know what that means? Every time you try to run, every time you try to hide, there's going to be one of my boys out there, and he's going to whip you like a red-headed stepchild. Then he's going to throw you back in, and I'm going to lay my boots in your face, kick out your teeth. I'm going to pin you, boy. One, two, three. Once and for all, it's over, Dundee. You mighty midget. The day is done. Ha <laughs> ha. Tell him some inside. Bill Dundee. Let me tell you, I know you're hoping, I know you're dreaming to get two minutes alone in a ring with me. But it ain't never gonna happen because Bill Bull Payne is gonna beat you for the one, two, three. The next thing you gotta remember, Bill Dundee, is that I am a lumberjack. Oh, baby. I'm gonna have this strap outside that ring. Every time you weasel your way out of that ring, I'm gonna beat you till you squirm back in the ring and then Bull Payne will beat you one, two, three. End of story. The bottom line is, Dundee, if you got two minutes with Samantha, you need a doctor and two oxygen tanks to make it home. <laughs> Bull Payne and Samantha going against Dundee in the Lumberjack Strap Match, one of seven big matches Monday night at the Coliseum. We'll be back here in a moment.
tag team match coming up right here. We got Randy Rhodes, Tim White, and one of the Scorpions up there. Here comes the superstar, Bill Dundee, Dirty White Boy, Tony Anthony, and the King, Jerry Lawler. Boy, look at the talent over on that side of the ring. As they step up onto the ring apron, we've got an expiration of time match going here. And this one should be something to see. Boy, I'm glad we had time for this one. Of course, we started with a world tag uh, title match earlier today. And uh, there was time to get this one in. We are glad to be able to bring it to you from the USWA here today. I'll tell you, Dave, one of the things I'm sure the fans are going to enjoy about this six-man tag, you look on one side of the ring, you got the brawling of Tim White and uh, Randy Rhodes and the Scorpion. You look on the other side of the ring, and you got three distinct styles. And Jerry the King Lawler, the consummate wrestler. You got the dirty white boy who from the backwoods of Tennessee, just a guerrilla fighter. And then you got a man that has as much fight in a small frame as you will find in any tiger in the jungles of the world, and that in superstar Bill Dundee. And I gotta say, Bill looking even more fit and trim than I've seen him in recent weeks. Well, he certainly does look good, and he's going against the big one in Randy Rhodes. Oh, they double up the dirty white boy there. They dumped Mr. Rhodes on his back. Now we see a different style. Dirty White Boy goes in to work on Randy Rhodes, distant cousin of uh, the Dusty Rhodes uh, clan, I understand. Tag made now. We're going to see Tim White for the first time in the match. Rhodes holding Dirty White Boy up, and White comes in, and Dirty White Boy, you don't want to raise this young man's ire because he'll come right back at you, as you just saw. Puts him into the boot of the king, and he's going to tag, and Lawler in a tag team match used to seeing him in singles match and singles competition but look at this double teaming and white goes down and the king follows through with that mighty right hand oh my goodness already it's a long day for tim white head slammed into the turnbuckle by the king it looks like the team of lawler dundee and dirty white boy working very successfully at this point in the match together tag is made and we see bill dundee in the ring one more time dundee has white spread eagle and now just drops down on him with that inside toe hole. Look at this, Dundee just working one pressure point and then another. Uh-oh, white in the wrong place, wrong time, and Lawler delivers to the right hand. Boy, he's got to be wondering, why did I show up here today? Back body drop. Dundee puts white down and puts that boot across the face. Tag is made, here comes dirty white boy. Well, now you can see the styles of the wrestlers coming through, and it is just, uh, it's a great thing to watch when you see three wrestlers on one side of the ring in six-man competition when they all three have different and unique styles, and there you see some of the brawling techniques of the dirty white boy. I'll tell you, you know, Tony Anthony, something else. There's a certain uh, freedom factor, too, in that uh, they're not wrestling for title belts. They normally wrestle as single or as two-man tag teams. Here they're out here in a six-man match, and they can kind of do their own thing a little bit. And we're seeing exactly that. Tag made. Here comes Lawler back in. Dirty white boy tagged Lawler twice. He knows that Lawler can take care of business. Lawler, crowd yelling for the DDT. They got it. Lawler puts white on his neck. Tim White down on the mat. Let's see if Jerry goes for the cover. No, he's going to pick him up. White moved into the corner, tag is made. Seems to be a pattern of tags here in this six-man match. As Lawler goes to Dundee and tags him in. And superstar Billy gonna add a little insult to injury there. He walked right across his belly there. And here comes Randy Rhodes. Looks like they wanted Rhodes in the ring that time. Rhodes is the biggest one on that side of the ring, and that's saying something because the Scorpion is huge. But uh, yeah, they got him in there, the biggest guy against the smallest. And Dundee just caught him with a right hand to the side of the jaw. It stunned him, I think, more than anything. Rhodes coming back. Got Bill with a boot in the midsection. Here comes the Scorpion now, double teamed by the Scorpion and Rhodes. Scorpion now going to work, but Dundee going to come firing back. Well, I, Bill Dundee's recuperative powers. I mean, here's a man that can really put the fight right back into a match. Lawler and Dundee double teaming. We've seen that before. Well, we sure have. Scorpion, the recipient, and Lawler now, crowd yelling again for Lawler to take care of the Scorpion, puts him into the boot of dirty white boy Tony Anthony, and now Tony going to come into the ring. Uh, Jerry stepped over to keep the other two from uh, stepping in there while Tony took over the work against the Scorpion here. He backs to the corner, and look at that. Leg drop across the chest. 
And the referee going to start the count. Now Tony going to get up and do some more. <laughs> you get the feeling that the team of the Dirty White Boy, Dundee, and Lawler are enjoying this match. I, I think they are. I think they are really having a good time. Things are going their way. Dundee, boy, did you see him. Aerial acrobatics off that top rope. Scorpion down. Billy going for the cover. Scorpion going to pop out of there. Snap Mare going to put him right in the corner. Tag is made. Tim White going to come in now. And Dundee going to match up with White. They uh, took the measure of this man a little earlier. It looks like Dundee going to go right back where he started after White. He even yanked him by the hair that time. Hits him with a fist. Mr. White is on the mat once again. Tag is made. Dirty White Boy back in. A little double team there. Dirty White Boy taking right over. Power slam. Yes, sir. Center of the ring. And the DWB is TCB in the ring. Oh, I tell you what. He is fired up today. He's ready to go. I wonder if he's looking ahead to one of these matches coming up this week. Look out. Lawler going for the pile driver. The referee distracted, actually, by Dirty White Boy. And Lawler pile driving Tim White. One, two, he three. Got it. He got it. We got to take a break, Mike. We'll be right back. There we go. Yeah, we are uh, right back here checking the, uh, the action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. This is a big night coming up. Uh, the Coliseum, uh, no action at the Coliseum last week due to the fair. But boy, back uh, this Monday night and take a look at this card. The opening match, PYT's with Chris Love scheduled to go against the new kids. Then in the next match, World Light Heavyweight title will be on the line as Nightmare Danny Davis, back from that successful tour of Japan, has the belt and will be defending against one of the goons that you see pictured right here. That is uh, the second match of the night, and already you are in the title defenses. That gives you an idea of how the night is uh, scheduled. Billy Joe Travis will be in. This is a non-title match, but it uh, doesn't make any difference, let me tell you. As Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, will be looking for Billy Joe Travis. You see Billy Joe's guitar right there. I, I'm, I'm sure by Monday night he'll have a new guitar and, uh, and be carrying it in there with him. And Dirty White Boy tuning up for this match in that six-man match we just saw. That's right. He's ready. There's no doubt about it after watching him here today. Lumberjack strap match coming up next. We had Bull Payne and Samantha talking about this. Uh, Samantha is going to be one of the Lumberjacks. That's where you have Lumberjacks stationed around the ring with, the, with a strap. And if somebody tries to run out of the ring, they not make sure they get back in the ring. Superstar Bill Dundee, he's been in those matches before. He will be going against Bull Payne. And, oh, by the way, if Dundee wins, he gets two minutes in the ring with Samantha. Jeff Jarrett and Robert Fuller, they came in as champions today. They were defeated by a team called the Texas Outlaws, brought in by Eric Embry, but we I know. Hate, I hate to disagree with you, Dave. The belts were stolen today uh, on well, TV yeah, by Eric Embry point. and his uh, barroom uh, brawler, bar Texas brawlers. Outlaws. That's what really what happened. Rematch has been signed. We have it confirmed with Eddie Marlin that uh, the match has been signed. It will be Jeff Jarrett and Robert Fuller for the belts against the Texas Outlaws. Next match, Southern Heavyweight title will be on the line. Dirty Dutch Mantell gets to climb in the ring with Eric Embry. Listen to the stipulations. The ring is enclosed with a 12-foot cage. Special referee, much to the dismay of Eric Embry, is going to be Eddie Marlin. And Tojo will be handcuffed to Dirty White Boy in the corner. And don't forget about this, too. We had that videotape from Tom Pritchard saying he is going to show up at the Coliseum. And it, it was not a uh, favorable videotape in Eric Embry's favor. But I he said he that. was not coming to talk, too. That's, right. That's uh, coming up Monday night, the Southern Heavyweight title on the line. Main event of the night, World Unified Heavyweight title on the line. Coco Beware. Jerry talked about the chance to uh, prove to Mid-South Wrestling fans and also all wrestling fans that this is the big time. And if he can defeat Coco Beware, That'll go a long way toward uh, cementing that in everybody's mind. He'll be taking on Coco Beware with a world title on the line Monday night at the Coliseum. We hope you'll make your plans to be there. We're going to take another break. We'll check the time and be back right after this. We're both still upset, uh, and the fans are upset, really? about what happened with the world tag titles today, as not only Embry made it three against two, but then Billy Joe Travis with that guitar nailed Robert Fuller. They stole the belt, so now Embry is claiming he and his Texas outlaws are the rightful owners of the belt, still think that one's going to be appealed and maybe overturned. And I hope that Jeff and Robert just take matters in their own hands Monday night at the Coliseum, win the match, get the belts back where they belong. That'll be the simple way for the whole thing. Action coming up tonight in Boonville, Mississippi. All right, very good. We hope you'll join us next week. More USWA action coming up right here. Until then, for Michael St. John, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. <laughs>